a number of enhancements have been made to the FeatureCam 2013 R2 user interface. These enhancements make FeatureCam even easier to use. The enhancements include new colour options for backgrounds and tooling, new attribute settings and help images as well as balloon pop-up help images, new simulation toolbar and resolution options, and new support file send options. In this example we're going to look at a range of user interface improvements. First one we're going to look at is the background colour. At the moment you can see I've chosen a full white background. However we can change our background to suit or work with our customised user interface. If I right click anywhere in the space outside of the toolbars I can choose to customise. When I go to the customise option you'll notice I've got my three styles that have been in FeatureCam for some time now. However if I choose the classic option I'll get a message saying FeatureCam can change the background for me if I wish to do so. The background is designed to suit the interface colouring. If I choose yes, you'll note we go from white to a grey on a gradient background. If I go to the shaded grey, again I get the same message. This time it customises to give me a dark grey background. And if I choose the glass theme, again yes, you'll see I get a bluish type background. As well as that, we've also added colour information to some of the tooling options as well. If I go to my options, colouring, default colours, you'll notice my background colour is shown here, so I can go back and change it if I wish. As I scroll down, you can see I've got all of my tooling options, so these are new. So we have the option to change the tool, the tool holder, the tool shank, the tool spindle, and lathe inserts if we're doing any turning. These two tool colours will be shown if my tool colours is turned off in my simulation. If we go to our options simulation, make sure tool colours is off. Then when I do my simulation, I'm just going to do a single step on 3D. You see the tool comes into position and we can see the colouring as indicated from my default colours blue for the holder, a light grey for the shank and a dark grey for the cutting portion of the tool. These colours are also reflected inside the tool manager. If I go into the manufacturing tool manager you'll notice that the tool parameters we can see we have a gradient background indicating the colouring of my gradient in the interface. Likewise if I click on any one of my tools you'll see I get the blue holder, the grey shank and also the dark grey cutting portion of the tool. You'll also notice that we have the holder and the shank displayed in the tool parameters dialog. If I hover over this area you'll see that the tool will zoom in to where the cursor is to centre on the cutting portion of the tool so I can see more detail. This happens for all the tools. If I wish to turn this off, option off, I can right click and I get a series of different options available to me. For example, I can turn off the automatic center tool, then when I hover over I no longer get the option. Again that is reflected in all the other tools. Right click and I can turn the option back on again. As well as that we can also show the flutes on the tool. If I right click you'll notice that we get an option show flutes on endmill. This creates a texture map around the tool that indicates the flutes on the tool itself. As well as that I can also choose how I want to display this. So for example I can say turn off the holder and I'm now just looking at the tool itself. Again, I can turn that back on if I wish and go back to my centering. If we go into a tool, you'll notice we also get the same gradient background, the same colouring and so on that we saw within the interface before in the tool manager. You can also see we've got the same right click options available to us as well.
As well as that, we also have a number of new help images and dialogues to help us work through the product a bit more easier. In this case, I'm going to create a pocket. So I'm going to rotate my part around. I want to generate a pocket feature, although I seem to have a number of features already on the screen, so I want to make this a bit easier to see. Another new option we have, if I right click on any setup, I can now show or hide all the features in a particular setup. So I don't need to uncheck them, I just simply say hide all in setup, and that clears any clutter from the screen. I'm now going to create a pocket feature, so I'm going to create a pocket feature from this orientation, so create a pocket, extract with feature recognition. I'm going to go normal to this surface, and I'll use the automatic recognition to find a pocket. I'm going to select that pocket and say finish, and I now have my typical feature dialog as I would expect. However, we have added some new improvements to this. If I go over to the roughing operation, you can see again reflection of my tool dialog as we saw in the tool manager. But note there is a new tab called plunge. We have basically extracted all of the plunging options and ramping options and place those into a plunge dialog. This plunge tab you can see we have different controls for different elements such as the plunge clearance, Z ramp clearance and so on. Anything that isn't available you'll note is greyed out. As I click through these different uh, parameters you'll see there is an image to the right hand side. If I click on these you'll notice that we get an indication or a change in the image depending on what we're trying to show. Some images will show more than one parameter, for example the clearance and the Z ramp clearance. We also have a number of extra dialogues, for example we can see we've got a minimum ramp option here. If I click on this you can see the minimum ramp information. If I highlight any of the images you'll see you get a balloon help that zooms in and gives a bit more information on that particular section. This is the same throughout the images that are available. As well as that, if I go to the finishing tab, you can see we have a helical ramping option. If I select that and choose helical options, you'll notice again we get a similar image, only this time it's indicating my helical ramping and also my zigzag ramping. We also have the same options in the attributes, so you can go to the machining attributes. Under the lead ramp, you'll notice that our helical ramping is now available, and I can choose from the options dialog, and I get the same image with the balloon help. We also have a bit more information in this case, just the ramp diameter. So let's go back to our simulation. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and simulate my part, but we have some new options for our simulation toolbar. In this case I'm going to grab my simulation toolbar and I'm just going to anchor it at the top of my screen. We can now go in to the customize option, go to our commands and go to simulation. You'll see we have some new icons, for example use simulation as starting point and clear simulation starting point. I can use these to highlight the new options that we have inside our uh, simulation dialog. As well as that we also have the uh, simulation speed. Once I'm in the customize mode I can actually extend this. If I go up to my simulation icon I can extend this out to get more control over my speed of simulation. I can now move the slider across to where I want to get my ideal simulation speed and then play the simulation. In this case you can see I've gone through my simulation, I've indicated a gouge, so what I want to do is make my tool longer.
Let's go into the pocket and modify some parameters. So I'm going to select just a single tool to do my roughing. And then for my finishing tool, I'm going to select a smaller tool, something that will be able to machine this particular pocket. So let's select a 4mm end mill. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit this. So I've now got a clear information on the dialog that helps me see how big this particular tool is. So for example, I can modify the shank size. Let's make this 6 millimeters, And you'll see again an update in the tooling. Likewise, I can change the exposed length. So in this case, I'm going to make this slightly longer at 30 millimeters. I now get a clear indication as to what my tool assembly will look like. Again, I can go ahead and do my simulation. I've now managed to machine my pocket without the gouge. We still have one final issue. Here we can see the engraving, where I've engraved Delcam on the side of the part. See, the tool seems to have missed areas of the part. This is simply down to the resolution of the revolved stock. If I rotate round here, you can see it's quite faceted at the moment. We now have the option to control this faceting as well. We do this through the simulation dialog. If we go to the options, simulation. Note that we've split this up into more tabs. I've got a round stock tab, and here you can see I can control the roundness tolerance. It's quite a coarse tolerance at the moment. Let's drop this value down. Say apply. Say OK. Play through my simulation. And you can now see we've got a much better representation of the round stock we can clearly see the word Delcam across the part. Final thing to do is if we have any kind of support issues and we want to send the information to our colleagues that will be able to do the support for us, we can go ahead and actually export all of this, including the post and the user interface initialization file. And we can place this in a zip file directly into an email. If you go to File, send. We get a dialog saying what do we want to send. So we're going to send the part documentation, the post. I'm going to turn off the other two posts. I don't want to export a turning or a wire EDM post, but I do want to export my user interface initialization file. I'm going to send this as a zip file and say OK. Do I want to export the FMP file? I'm going to say no. I then get an email that pops up and you can see here that we've got a zip file. If we open the zip file, you can see we have the user interface initialization file, the FM file, and also the, the post I'm using in this case. This makes it much easier for support to identify any issues that might have with the file.